<laughs> we, uh, we skipped lunch just for you guys, my friends. Just for you. So let's do it. Uh, welcome, everybody. I hope you uh, had a great Netlify Compose. And uh, yeah, we're here to talk to you about AI-powered synergy, how we can revolutionize web development and content collaboration. Uh, what the heck does that mean? Well, we'll find out. And uh, in this talk, we really want to talk about how you can leverage AI, not just for writing code, but also for helping you publish content so that people can see it. Uh, my name is Otto Kukic. I am the, uh, the director of DevRel at Sourcegraph, and I have my boss here, uh, Raman Sharma, who is the uh, chief marketing officer at Sourcegraph. And um, if you guys are not familiar with who Sourcegraph is, we are a DevTools company based here in San Francisco. We've been around for about 11 years, and uh, we're on a mission to help developers untangle big, messy code bases, and we have two products that help, help you accomplish that. So we got our start and foundation in building the best code search uh, tool that is used by many large organizations like Reddit, Uber, uh, Dropbox, and many others. And we also have a public instance of this uh, Sourcegraph code search instance that you can find at sourcegraph.com slash search that has tons of open source repos already indexed for you to search and find code and be able to really identify what you're looking for. And uh, once you find it, you know, you can use code search to search across the entire ecosystem. Our public instance supports uh, tens of thousands of different repositories regardless of who the code, code host is, whether it's GitHub, GitLab, or some other one, um, any language, any size of the repository. And when it comes to searching, you can search via keyword, you can search via symbol, diff, author. How, we have many, many uh, supported parameters to help you find the exact code you need. And then once you find that code, you can make large scale batch changes, you can find insights on your code base and see how it's changing over time. And over the last two years, we've been building an AI coding assistant called Cody to help you actually do something with that code once you find it. And Cody is really built on this foundation of code search, code indexing, and code understanding that we've been working at for the last decade. And uh, Cody is helping developers untangle and understand their big messy code bases, generate code, generate docs, write unit tests, and ultimately our goal is to help you ship more content, ship more applications. And Cody is also available to try in our uh, Sourcegraph instance, as well as in your favorite IDE. So whether you're using VS Code or JetBrains, uh, we got you covered. But today, I also want to talk about another big, messy workflow that you may be all too familiar with, and that is content creation and publication. I mean, how many times have you needed to publish a blog post and it became a 40-step process. But uh, to talk a little bit more about that, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Raman. Yeah, thanks, Ado. So uh, as Ado mentioned, Sourcegraph, we are a developer tools company. Uh, I run marketing, but even half my team is engineers, like Ado. So we actually take a lot of pride in the fact that we handcraft our, our marketing website, and we run it on a platform like Netlify, uh, which works beautifully, by the way, highly, highly recommended. Uh, developers love it. But the problem is when we have other people, like when we get into this high velocity content creation and content publishing mode, we need to bring other people in, non-developers, non-technical people into, into, uh, into that process. And if you know, one of them wants to publish a blog post or one of them wants to create a good, good looking change log entry for a new feature that we have just created, and if my instruction to them is, oh, by the way, write that content in, in markdown format, go clone the GitHub repo for the, for the marketing website, create a branch, add the markdown to it, create a pull request, deal with all the merge conflicts, they're going to go run away. So we want to fix that problem, and my good friend Ardo here, he has promised me that he's going to fix that problem for me, and today, in front of all of you, he's going to train me, he's going to teach me how to do that using Netlify. So show us the way, Ardo. Cool, let's do it. I mean, I like the 40-step process, right? I mean, once you nail it down, it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty easy. But let's, uh, let's make content publishing and content creation 
uh, easy with uh, chat-oriented programming with Kodi, and let's utilize Netlify's visual editing with their new AI-assisted publish functionality so that we can make our developers as well as our marketers happy. So let's jump into the demo and uh, see what we're working with. So I'll close these slides here. And just to show you what our changelog looks like, th this is our marketing changelog where we ship a ton of new features on a bi-weekly basis and we want our users to know, hey, we added new support for new languages, we added Kodi on the web so that you can use it anywhere you're at. And these almost behave very much like blog posts so you could click into it, you can see the information, uh, you know, it'll have pictures, it'll have mentions, it'll have links. So for all intents and purposes, our changelog is another extension of the blog. And if we jump into our code base here, I have already gone, gone ahead and done some of the setup work, setting up uh, Stackbit and Netlify Create so that some of our pages, like the blog, can be edited and can be visually created, but we don't have that for our change log. And to show you what that looks like for a blog post, for example, if I click into it, I've identified all of the metadata for, for what a blog post looks like. It has a hero image, a social image, an external title, and all of these different fields that we have to let Netlify create know of so that when we go to use the visual editor, it's gonna know, okay, this is an editable field, uh, you know, allow me to, to make changes to it. But if we go into our changelog file, it is completely empty, we don't have any, any code for it. Now, I could go and copy the, the blog post one and look at a markdown file and try to decipher all of this information and write it myself, but that's gonna take hours, and we don't have hours, we only have 13 minutes, so let's use Kodi to help us generate this code and um, you know, help us accelerate this process. So here I've uh, opened up Kodi in Visual Studio Code. Uh, I gave it the changelog file, which is currently empty, and I have this prompt saying, hey Kodi, can you create a stack, uh, stack bit data model for the changelog content type? It's gonna be a page, and here's, here's an example of what one looks like. Just go ahead and do it for me. I gave it um, to our uh, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet LLM model, but we support uh, Gemini 1.5, we support Mixtral, we support uh, OpenAI, so we support all of the major foundational models as well as totally offline functionality. So if you're on a plane and you still wanna use Kodi, you can use it with local Olama models as well. So, Claude gave me this uh, you know, helpful response. Certainly, let me create a stack with data model for you. And here is all the code for it. And then it gave me a handy explanation of, hey, this is the model definition. This is all you need to get started. And to add this to my code, I could copy and paste it, or I could just hit this handy apply button, which is gonna go through and import it in the right file, in the right format, and make sure that everything is ready to go. So. Let's close out the chat, let's accept this change, and hit save, and then let's start up our application so that we can see if it, work, if it does indeed work. So we'll say npm run uh, visual editor, and then we'll also npm run dev. So now, if we go back to our browser and open up our local development environment, Give it a second to boot up. And let's exit full screen mode. Come on, demo gods. <laughs> so our site is running, our ch and there it is. It's coming through. Sorry, just some Wi-Fi issues. <laughs> All right, so now we got our Netlify Create environment up and running, and we've added our changelog model, so Raman should be able to go and make edits to our changelog now. So if we go into any of these, Raman, would you like to confirm that it does indeed work? Let's, let's do crossed. it. All right, I can see that I can definitely change the title here. I can definitely mess around. Oh, I can definitely mess around with the content as well. But Ardo, I'm feeling very magnanimous today. Why am I not able to change the name here and give credit to somebody else on my team. Oh, that's a, that's a good point. Let's see if we can get that fixed. So I'll admit I cheated a little bit here in that 
the main page, I've already, I've already added the uh, data stack build field pass <coughs> that match to that model entry. So we can make the changes to the title, we can make the changes to the actual content, but if we wanted to make all of the other fields that are in the changelog editable, we just have to tell our front end that they exist and where to look. So let's go into this po uh, post details info TypeScript file and add the correct data attributes. And to do that, I can, uh, I can go here, look through the HTML and find, okay, this is the username, so let's add the data, uh, the stack bit model to it. Or again, I can ask Cody and I have a pre-prompt here that I've generated because you don't wanna see me type live, that'll take forever. So I will do an inline edit now by running command K and here I am telling Cody to go ahead and add the stack bit data attributes to the correct divs, uh, include the author information and all the other relevant information to make it editable. And just for extra comfort, I will give it the change log uh, model as context as well so that it understands this is what you're uh, trying to change. So we'll do this. We'll use Cloud 3.5 Sonnet again. We'll hit submit and now instead of me having to go and write all this code, Cody's gonna go line by line figuring out which attributes need to be added. And it looks, looks correct to me. Let's accept it and let's see if this worked. So we'll go back to our editor and there we go. We can give Robin credit for uh, publishing this article. Awesome. All right, Otto, I love the visual editing experience. This is great. I can change all the blog post authors to my name now. But you know, this is not my usual workflow. When I'm writing a blog post, when I'm writing like a new piece of content, I'm actually working in a Google Doc or, or Notion. I don't work in a visual editing experience. So is it possible that I can just do my work in a Google Doc and Netlify just takes care of everything magically? So the feature requests never stop, right? <laughs> Uh, luckily, I, uh, I was able to hack uh, something together, so we actually support that functionality Who would out have of the guessed? box. <laughs> so, uh, let's, let's do it. Okay, coach I me. I can show you how it works. So if you click on the little plus icon to create a new page, All right. and hover over the change log type and say add to site. So we have the option to create a page manually, so if you're using the visual editor and you wanna add the content like, like you made the change earlier, you could do it but we also have this new section called add page with existing content. So if you wanna click on that, all you need to do is give it the slug, so whatever you want the URL to be for the article. Okay, I think we are gonna do something around OpenAI model. Okay, how about, how about we do this? And then Perfect. is this a doc that we're gonna import? Yeah, that looks like our announcement to get on the uh, OpenAI 01 waitlist for Cody. So let's try to import it. All you need to do is copy the URL and paste it in to the content source. Okay, I have the URL now, I pasted that. And I see that your Google account is already linked, so all that is set up. What are these other options at the bottom here? Okay, cool, so just by default, if we stopped here and hit add, what, um, what Netlify Create would do is it would import that article as is, map it to the right fields, and we would get our content imported. But we can also use AI to make that content a little bit more exciting. So we can set a target audience who, you know, who we expect the reader to be. And for this one, why don't we choose developers because they care about our, our change log the most. All right. And then we can also choose a brand voice. So we can you know, make it fun, we can make it focused on the enterprise, we can use our existing brand voice or create a brand new uh, template as well. But just for this demo, let's just use our existing brand voice uh, that, right. that you've defined for our company and let's try to import this article. Okay. So what's happening now? What's going on here? So now what we are doing is going <coughs> to the Google Doc, pulling it in, and we are mapping it against that model that we created earlier for the change log. So it's matching up against a preset that says, hey, this is, uh, this is what the title looks like. Find the title here. This is the content. This is what an image looks like. This is you know, the publication date, the tags, and all of that. And it automatically generated it, and now we can just hit publish, and we'll be good to go. It's already there now. Magical, isn't it? Yeah. 
uh, but I have a new problem now. What do I do with all this time? You know, I've, so much time has been freed up from, for, for marketers. I have to do something. And you know, if you happen to work for a boss who is technical, who like writes code all the time, they give you a lot of grief for not coding, not writing code. I'm going to write code. I'm going to show my boss. So let's do it. I'll go back here. So here I'm in this file slug. This is basically, this file defines the visual layout of all the changelog entries. I don't like the UI a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Cody to change the UI. Uh, just through natural language. So how about we do something fun like make the UI uh, more like 90s. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Matt yeah, loves GeoCities. GeoCities are my space. <laughs> style. And add some cool animations. Let's see what AI has in store for us. I don't know what's going to happen. That's the fun part. <laughs> so here you can see that coding is, code is going on. It first analyzes that text block, sorry, that code block, looks at what exists today, what needs to change based on the instructions that I've just provided. And then it'll go off and start working on that code make a bunch of changes, still working. There you, there you see all the diffs. And now, I don't know what has happened. I used to be a coder back in the day, but I have no idea what's going on here. So I'm just going to trust AI, and I'm going to hit accept all. Famous right? last words. <laughs> and then save. Let's see what just happened. There you go. <laughs> Who doesn't like that change log? So this is how using Kodi and Netlify, you can make developers more productive and marketers even more crazy. Thank you so much for your talk.